Welcome back YouTube, Captain Quinn here and I'm about to share with you the knowledge that you need to tie the most sexy, effective tube fly for steelhead in the world. That exists, period, bar none. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. Um, the first thing that you're gonna do it's kind of like a hobo spay tube fly, but it's got some, there's some, you know, the secrets are in the details, so pay attention. Um, I have this, the tube fly tool, which is a piece of shit, and it's already broken, so I've had to, this thing doesn't tighten down. I mean, they don't make things what they used to, but I've had to improvise with some leather or some rubber bands so it doesn't spin on me while I'm tying it. But anyway, I got the tube fly thing, uh, tool. And then I'm gonna get a tube, and I'm gonna cut it to about two and a half inches. Now when you're tying a tube fly, you know, it's imp there's some things to consider. One very important thing to consider is where is the hook going to be sitting when you're fishing it? You know, a lot of people, maybe they only use that much tube, a half of an inch of tube, but their fly ends up being about three inches long. So your hook, once you've secured it, is right butted up way high in the tube and if the steelhead which they sometimes do they just swipe at the tail end of the the fly you're going to miss a lot of potential hookups so i like to make my tube longer so the hook sits back further where the end of the feathers are and that's still going to give the fly loss of action now i'm going to put a little bit of weight on this tube uh fly so i have to cut the top part on a bit of an angle because um, the tube's pretty thick and doesn't quite fit into this tungsten bead head here, but I feed that through. Oh, drop it on my lap first. And, and then we're in business here. There we go. So I've got the tube through the tungsten head. I'm gonna clip off that end. And then what you do is you take a lighter and you just heat up the tubes on both ends so the thread won't fly off or slip off one end. And that's just gonna curl the plastic back on itself. Don't heat it up too much, just enough to curl it back over itself. Just like that. I'm gonna do that to both ends just to make sure that uh, the thread stays nice and secured to the fly. So there you go. That's basically your, your, your blank. This is your, kind of your blank canvas and this is what you're gonna create your masterpiece on. So now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in the tube fly tool. I'm just gonna put a little bit of saliva on that so I can get it off when I'm done, sorry. Gotta lube it up. Oh, I need lube. Um, so just stick that in there and and then the elastic band kind of jimmy rig. There you go, here we are, we're ready to go. Let's get to it. I got uh, orange thread here. It doesn't matter what color it is, choose your favorite color. I'm just gonna wind it back to the tail end of the fly. I get way back here, bingo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave a little bit of an orange butt on it. And uh, just cause I, I, I like that. And that's gonna just create a little bit of a gap between where the fly starts and um, and where the hook uh, lies. That's probably enough. I like that, I like the way it looks. Um, and I just don't want this thing to come undone and start falling off the back, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, head cement near the tail. I've had them start coming undone. I fish flies hard and I fish flies just wild, like a wild man. and. The fish, the fish do a number on them. I, you know, I end up in a few trees here and there because my roll cast isn't up to snuff. You know, you get into some tight spots, you get yourself into some pickles here and there, and you just want to make sure your gear is up to the top to the job. So, I, I make my flies sturdy and 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 just durable. Um, and so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure a piece of. Uh, wire, a gold wire, copper wire, silver wire. I'm gonna use silver wire here, we'll go silver on silver. I'm gonna put a, a, a silver butt, this thing's gonna have two butts, a orange butt and a silver butt. And um, I'm gonna make the butt about the same length, maybe a little bit longer than the uh, orange butt. 
secure the uh, tinsel on, silver tinsel, and I'm going to wind it back to where the, the reason I put this uh, wire on is because the tinsel can also come undone if you fish it hard like I do. And the wire is brilliant because it keeps things nice and secure and in place. And it just adds a little bit of uh, security. And um, so there we go. I've got my s silver body, I guess you could call that a body, and my orange butt. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some guinea, uh, strung guinea feathers, and this is going to be the hackle for the body. I'm going to find a nice long one here. We're going to be able to, the thing with guinea that's kind of annoying is they're, they're short feathers. So if you want to do a long wrap, it's kind of, it can be a challenge. Sometimes you have to use two feathers, but I'm going to try to find one that's up to the task here. And I think, I think I just did. I'm gonna pluck that baby out, good. Now I'm gonna secure the feather as you wind up the hackle. I want the hackles to be getting bigger, not smaller. So I'm gonna secure it from the top, the top. I'm gonna put the top part of the hackle at the back part of the tube. And that's where I'm gonna start my wrap. And then it's gonna get from bigger to smaller. And it just looks good that way. You could go the other way if you want, I don't care. I'm just telling you what I do. And I'm gonna take some orange Trobol dub, F flame, FL flame, Florida flame, or fluorescent flame. I'm gonna take a nice healthy uh, liberal dollop of that and I'm just going to pick it apart in my fingers. I'm not going to bother with the dubbing loop, usually never do. Um, and I'm just going to kind of work it in there with my fingers just because, I don't know, you don't need a dubbing loop really. Not with these mad skills. And then I'm going to wrap that up for the rest of the body. And um, kind of pick through it, comb it a bit, comb it back, take the excess, and just continue with the wrap. Till I've got a nice orange flaming body. Kind of wind it back on itself and finish the job and secure it all into place. I'm gonna kind of stand them up, kind of spread them out a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the guinea fowl and guinea, uh, Guinea, these guinea hens, actually, they get their name because they, uh, they ride on the backs of guinea pigs uh, in Papua New Guinea. Um, and, and so that's, that's why they, they get their name guinea hens. Um, and it's really quite something to see a, a little guinea chicken riding on the back of a guinea pig in Papua New Guinea. Um, which was named after a father named uh, New Guinea, Papa New Guinea, they used to call him. And he was actually a fisherman as well back in the day. And he fished exclusively you know, with flies tied from a uh, guinea hen. Um, of course, none of that is true. I'm just, uh, just kind of rambling on here at this point as I work the, the body hackle up the tube. Bingo, just enough worked out just fine. We're, we're looking good here, guys. I know you were kind of sitting on the edge of your seat thinking, oh, Captain Quinn, oh, Captain Quinn, I don't know if you have enough enough hackle there to, to finish your wrap. And yeah, well, I do, so don't worry. Now I got the wire and I'm gonna lock, the wire is gonna just add security and lock everything else into place, including the silver body, the dubbing, and the body hackle, which is Papua New Guinea. Um, and so I'm going to start, and I'm just going to do kind of uh, wider wraps on a nice angle here to start with, just because that should be adequate. You can go as tight or as wide as you want. And it just kind of requires a bit of finesseful maneuvering. 
because you're going to have to weave through the hackles and you don't want to pinch them down too much. You kind of want to just subtly kind of sneak by on your way to the finish line here. Just kind of weaving back and forth. Don't want to knock any of the the feathers down and kind of just get your other hand in there and just get them both involved working together. You need some cooperation here from all 10 digits and you get in there and get in there and just be patient and work your way up and through and over and under and secure the crap out of that baby because you know what? You're going to have a giant steelhead grab your fly and the last thing you want to do, we want, is for it to just totally come undone. And if you, if you get your uh, whip finish tool, you can kind of just anything that you might have pinched down, just kind of work free. There you go. Laughing now, laughing now. Almost there, almost there. Oops. Okay, sorry. So hang with me here, people. Hang with me. I hope you've uh, been having a good holiday season so far, getting ready for Christmas. I hope you've all been, you're all on Santa's uh, nice list. I know I barely made the cut this year, spending too much time on the river, if you know what I mean, and ignoring and neglecting my responsibilities as a human being to uh, to my family and, and society. I'm pretty, uh, pretty much um, just a bit of a, a non-contributor these days. It's been pretty good fall steelhead run and I mean I, I know you understand. Um, so here we are, we're at the top and we'll just lock that thread into place. That's a gorgeous looking body. I've done a wonderful job, I know. Thanks for noticing. And the fly is looking great here. And now we're getting to the head of the fly, the top kind of part of the hackles. And this is where you kind of add the pizzazz here. Now what this body hackle is going to do is it's going to stand up what we're about to put on is some marabou here. So I'm going to start with a big old wrap of some nice pink marabou. And uh, I love pink. I just, I, I think there's, you know, when you start getting into flies like this, they're, 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 these flies don't really look like anything. They're more of a lure. They're not super traditional, but they're super fun to tie. They, do they mimic anything in the water column that the steelhead might encounter and, and be part of their natural food source? Absolutely not. You know, maybe a minnow, maybe a minnow, maybe another fish. They kind of have that same size and maybe there's some flash and some tinsel and some, something about the action that just entices them to, to bite. But I think they're, they're more just attractive, attractant flies, you know, like, um, like, like more like a lure than, uh, than your traditional kind of like match the hatch type of approach. You're kind of more fishing with a lure when you start getting into these types of flies. But it's fun. They're fun to tie and they can be super effective. Um, so it all depends on what you're into and what kind of gets you going and gets you, gets you moving. Um, and so these flies, I like to make pretty flashy. Will some fish swim away from them? They'll look at it, they'll go, dear God, what in the hell is that? And it looks scary and I'm going to swim away from it. But a lot of steelhead will go, you know, that fly pisses me off, I'm going to smash it. And that's the reaction that you want. Um, does it, are they going, oh, that looks like that uh, stone fly that I had for breakfast this morning and it was pretty tasty, I might have another one. No probably not. It's just, whoa, what is that? Uh, let's quickly attack it and see. Um, and so that's kind of, and you fish them differently. Like a lot of people, if you're using traditional nymphs, 
or kind of traditional food flies that mimic traditional foods like mayflies, stoneflies, nymphs, you know, your uh, your prince nymphs, your copper johns, your even your single eggs. You're going to want to present those in a more natural fashion, kind of a deadlift, zero drag on your swing. You don't want a tight line. You kind of want it to be all, all kind of, um, you know, mended and, and slack line. So, uh, sorry, I'm putting some tinsel on, and I like to have my tinsel kind of spread out on the top part and the bottom part evenly, uh, both on the sides. And I'm just making the tinsel just as long as the fly, and I want the fly to be... Um, tinsel's nice and flashy and kind of, you know, add some pizzazz to the fly. No, don't overdo the tinsel, but certainly, certainly don't be afraid to, to get it, to, to get, to introduce it to the equation. Um, you know, tinsel, tinsel can have it play, it play a pretty awesome role in, in dressing up your fly and making it look awesome here. So I'm on my second layer and I'm trying to make them all kind of even here. I think that's good. We'll call that good. I'm going to lock all the tinsel in here. And then, then what I'm going to do, and this is kind of, this is where things, yeah, sorry. I'm going to have a drink and I'm going to stop there for a sec. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, it's so much better. Awesome. Back in action. That one's blinking. Does that matter? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then, then, uh, you know, I, uh, so we've worked the tinsel in. It's good. So we've gone, uh, orange butt, silver body, uh, red um, dubbing body, and then we've done with our Papua New Guinea hackle. We've done a layer of marabou. We've added our tinsel. And now we're going to add some legs, some spindly kind of legs, just to give that thing some, some real enticing action. And I'm just going to take three, three uh, grizzly hackle, red, so from a red grizzly chicken or whatever the hell this thing came from. Three of them, and I'm gonna kinda just, you know, put them like a triangle, stand them up, say my I want my fly to go back there. I usually make these a little bit longer. These are kinda the, the, the parts of the fly that hang back the furthest. And that just, it just, you know, they create, they have such a awesome looking action when they're swinging in the river that it's just, it's, it's really, uh, a shame to not build them into your your larger uh, types of flies like a tube fly or an intruder and I kind of just wind them and wrap them in you know space space them out evenly three of them uh, so kind of like the propellers of a of an airplane and there we go how's that looking yeah they're all about even so that's good uh, and we'll secure those in place. I'll take my scissors, which are buried under this pile of feathers, and I'll just They're dull as shit, but I'll trim off the Excess mess there and then I'll just lock them in place and here we are we're on the home stretch the final shebang I'm going to take a lighter colored pink uh, marabou and this is going to be the last wrap, the last piece of the puzzle and uh, this is going to kind of tie it all together really nicely and just make this fly absolutely irresistible to uh, the beasts, the beastly steelhead that swim and, and mingle under the water that we as fishermen and, and women desperately, desperately try so hard to interact with. We put ourselves through all kinds of pain and torturing and suffering, and we call it an experience, just so we can have that one moment, that one glimpse of these beautiful creatures, um, and just, you know, see them jump, 
you know, feel their soft silver scales under our fingertips as we, if we get lucky enough to tail one and land it. And they're just incredible creatures that drive us to extreme lengths. And it's uh, pre pretty awesome. Tying flies is, uh, you know, it's a nice little craft, a nice little hobby that we get to uh, experience as fishermen too. And you get to create all kinds of wonderful things. That's what I love about fishing. You're always learning. You're always new, applying new, new uh, knowledge and, and tactics and skills. And it's just really a dynamic uh, activity that challenges you till, um, till you've breathed your last breath, it will challenge you. So not too many things in life that do that. Um, so here we go. We've got our last piece of the puzzle, a lighter pink marabou. Things really taken shape. I'm just going to lock that in. And there we go. Take my scissors, cut off the end there. Great, grab my whip finish tool. I like to kinda, I like to do more than just one whip finish, one, two. I like to do a few. Just for insurance, like I said, steelhead. Everyone says that, you know, you hear a lot like, oh, why do you fish big intruders? Why do you fish big intruders? And people say the classic response is, oh, because it's such a aggressive takes and aggressive grabs. And that really hasn't been my experience at all fishing bigger flies. I, some of the weakest, softest, most like indecisive takes have been on big flies where they just kind of swipe at it and they swipe at it and they swipe at it and um, now it's a pain in the ass to get off here. Oh man, I'm gonna end up stabbing myself. Um, <laughs> that's always good when you can't get your fly off the tube. But anyway, uh, I'll get that off. And, um, the, but there you go. like. Honestly, be honest with yourself. Take a look at this fly and, 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 and ask yourself, have I ever seen a sexier uh, tube fly in my entire life? And I, I know the answer is no, because they don't get better than this. This is so hot, so hot. So you're welcome. One of my favorite flies to swing. Uh, it just looks so lethal. So. Tie a couple of your own. Hopefully you've learned a few tricks uh, in this fly tying episode. I'm Captain Quinn. Thanks for watching. Um, until next time, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Tell all your friends and just get out fishing. Have fun. Be a kind person and uh, enjoy your holiday season. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to be trying to drop a new video every day for the month of January. That's going to be my Christmas present to you, as well as we have a wicked new film coming up called Poncho the Fishing Chicken. And it's, it's, it's a film about a troubled angler who fies, finds the most unlikely uh, uh, companion and they just embark in a lifelong journey of, of fishing and, and intimacy together. Um, not the weird kind of intimacy either, just the companionship of fishing. There's no bestiality, so if you're tuning in for that, you, you got to go to a different uh, website. But um, anyway, thank you, and we'll see you next time.